You have probably seen Steven Destiny Bonnell II on many streams and talk shows discussing different issues, as well as having many famous guests and popular content creators on his stream. But do you know that Destiny started his online career as a StarCraft 2 player? Steven started his journey in that game with Beta, playing the Zerg race. And while he wasn't a tier 1 player from his region, he still managed to quickly climb up the ladder and achieve a competitive level that allowed him to participate in tournaments and sometimes even beat really good players. However, Destiny has a far more outstanding achievement comparatively and that was streaming. He was one of the pioneers in Justin TV, a website that would later transform into Twitch. Before becoming a full-time streamer, Steven used to clean carpets and work different shifts at the casino, but after receiving his first paycheck from the platform, he chose to commit to streaming, hoping to scale the numbers and eventually make a living solely from his new job. Um, yeah, a lot of people do this in a very romantic way, where they take like a giant leap of faith and blah blah blah. Uh, but for me, it basically came down to the point to where um, I was working an ungodly amount of hours doing some carpet cleaning shit. Um, it, it was like, I would, like, basically I was working 13-day stretches, I'd have every other Sunday off. And I would try to stream in my free time when I would come home or sometimes between carpet cleaning jobs if they were scheduled far enough apart. And I think um, I want to say, I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% sure that I was in the first batch of people to get paid by Justin TV. And after I got paid that, that 200 some dollars, I was like, oh, well, wait, hold on. Like, if I do the math on the amount of hours I put into streaming here and then I compare that to the amount of hours I put into carpet cleaning, well, if my income scales even like 50 to 60% with my time streamed, then I would make more money per hour streaming than I would doing my carpet cleaning shit because I was doing that shit for like over uh, like a hundred hours a week. It was fucking ridiculous how much stupid fucking time I was wasting this place. So like, oh fuck it, like I'll just fucking do this. And then um, yeah, basically I went and I told my boss my girlfriend like was delivering her baby early and then he let me go and I fucking just started streaming full time. Yeah. This was a successful decision and Destiny quickly gained fame as a very interesting and entertaining streamer. Combined with a good skill level and game knowledge, it was a natural fit for many viewers. However, his brand of comedy was polarizing within the community, and he was often criticized for his language and jokes used on stream. The Overlord will serve as a retard magnet, drawing out the Protoss army from his base, and then my lings will come in from behind to hold the army in place while I thrust my mighty roach dick. Simultaneously with his streaming career, Destiny was advancing in his pro-gamer life, becoming a better player. He would become a part of root gaming in later complexity, although that didn't really last for too long. And if we talk about his professional matches, he can boast off with victories against such high caliber players as Bomber. Bomber killing off the south, killing off the north. Can he defend well enough? Great EMPs going down yet again. Every single Infessor is low on energy. Only one well, has some. Next scan. And it looks like, oh no! Infested Terrans have broken through up at the north. The tanks unseized. The Zerglings taking the opportunity. Bomber caught out of position at one key moment. Now we're seeing more infested Terrans get lobbed out. The Ghost doing huge damage to all the Zerglings, but another pack of infested Terrans. Easily fungal growthing all the Marines and Marauders. I cannot believe we are seeing this kind of unusual play from Destiny. Bomber, who is so passive, just taking more bases, easily going to be able to take out your typical average everyday your Korean-style Zerg. Oh, the lob. Man, having a lot of trouble against this hit and run style. And it looks like, oh no, Bomber now moving out onto the low ground. Advancing forward, completely vulnerable, surrounded by Zerglings. Zerglings take out the tanks, take out the remaining forces. There's some great EMPs, but will it be enough? The Zergling count is too many, and good game! Destiny has taken game one against Star Tails Bomber. And his biggest achievement was taking fourth place in MLG Invitational North America 2011, beating In Control and Noni. At first it seemed that Destiny was really dedicated to becoming a top tier pro. In December 2011 he even trained in Star Tales Steam House in South Korea, and later he traveled to Poland to practice in the Ministry of Wind Training House in June 2012. However, Destiny chose his streaming career over being a pro gamer for a simple reason. Streaming gives you more flexibility in life, and pro gaming career is often seen as something more stressful and difficult overall. He also created his own website, destiny.gg, to have more control over his audience and, more importantly, his platform to engage with them in more convenient ways. Destiny also helped improve streaming in general, paying attention to such issues as DDoS attacks and Skype IP leaks, which led to him creating his own guide for a defense system against malicious viewers. While Destiny was one of the most successful streamers back in those days, 
He would also get himself into troubles with his edgy humor and jokes. People were even messaging the teams and sponsors to ask for his removal, which eventually led to him parting ways with Team Quantic. In 2012, Destiny started mixing in some League of Legends streams and slowly but surely started drifting away from StarCraft 2. The problem lied in the esports landscape and the state of the game. StarCraft 2 was going through major balance issues and also started losing its player base to other titles such as League of Legends, CSGO and Dota 2. Blizzard would be slow to react to the complaints from the public and professional players, and the company was failing to adapt to the new competition and changing market. Tell me, what were your concerns for StarCraft 2 in the 2012-2013 era? Uh, losing its games like number one spot to league. My biggest problem with um, my biggest problem with StarCraft was was mainly a problem with Blizzard. Um, I guess my biggest problem was that I felt like they weren't very responsive to the changing landscape. Pretty much, I think pretty much that was like my problem. Is like at the time when they came out, was Riot seemed to be like ultra responsive to like growing changes. They were adding new things to the game. Um, they were changing things in response to community feedback and all of this stuff. It just it felt like a very live, very adaptive, very reactionary, very dynamic process when you when you were playing some of these newer games that were coming up. Um, well, newer games. I say like when you were playing like Dota two and League. Like new ch every time a new champion or hero would come out. Uh, you know, it was just like a lot of excitement. And then for StarCraft, we were kind of like, you know, stuck, you know, like, I don't know, nerfing or buffing bunker build time for like two years. And um, it, it seemed like to get anything done, like we we couldn't get like LAN at tournaments. I remember it was like one of the biggest fucking fights in the world, <laughs> like dumb shit like this. And I still don't think we do. I don't know if that matters or not anymore. But, um, you know, things like not having like the ability to skin any of your units. Um, the social features in StarCraft were horribly lacking. Uh, yeah, there were just like a lot of kind of like smaller dumb problems it seemed that Blizzard was just like very, very, very slow to get around to adjusting. And everyone else seemed to kind of like move forward much quicker than they did. Starting from 2012, he basically envisioned and predicted many negative changes and trends that would damage StarCraft 2. He was amongst the few vocal minority who would criticize the game and the company really harshly, while many other content creators or players were still trying to sugarcoat the situation. I feel like, I almost feel like, like this is like a, a lesson that you learn in history, like it's common sense. Like look at the Betamax versus VHS, like Betamax was a superior format in every single way, but VHS, you know, was the one that was more aggressive with their marketing, and what did we end up with? Mm -hmm. You know, that the, they became the prominent thing. Um, and, and I mean, it's the exact same way, like StarCraft 2 might be a better game than other things, but if it doesn't get widespread acceptance, like you're always going to have a worse scene as the result of it. You know, like. If there are 500,000 people watching League of Legends, it doesn't matter that StarCraft 2 is more complex or, you know, whatever our toast. I love Artosis, but in his blog about our StarCraft is the most beautiful game of the time here. Like, I mean, that's fine, but. That's not know, what it sounds like. That's exactly, <laughs> what it sounds like. that's exactly what it sounds like. StarCraft 2 is the most beautiful game, and it's beautiful and it's oh felt, you know, whatever. Geez. I don't know what it does. It sounds. I, my voice is terrible. I can't impersonate him. But, like, he talked about how beautiful it sounds, and that's fucking great, man. But, like, do you think that people are going to want to bust their balls playing 15 hours a day uh, this game like StarCraft 2 and, and make like maybe a hundred grand at tournaments when there are like million dollar tournaments for a game like League of Legends? Do you think that sponsors are going to are going to want to sponsor an event that gets 50,000 50,000 viewers on a tournament when another event that ha that applies to the exact same demographic with like a 95% crossover from other communities is going to have 650,000 viewers? Like wh like what what do you expect there? Like if you if you wanted to go and sponsor somebody and you have some people playing a tournament that gets 650,000 viewers and other people playing a tournament that gets 50,000 viewers, like who are you going to sponsor? You know, like that affects prize money. That affects that affects uh you know teams. That affects sponsorships. It affects salaries. It affects everything. With time, it turned out that Destiny was quite right about the decline of StarCraft 2 and decrease in numbers and even lack of swift actions in those times that cost StarCraft to a big number of people who eventually left for other esports titles. One of the interesting debates happened with Idra. While they agreed on Blizzard making different mistakes with StarCraft 2, Idra was still advocating to work with the community to make the game better and fix what they can. And Destiny was 100% sure it wouldn't matter in the long run. It was so much to... farther ahead of what we have now. It's way, it's way better than the current version. Way better. You're so the one, much better. You're the one who's actually trying to defend Blizzard here. Like, we're all saying that they fucked up and they're not going to fix it, so stop hoping for them to fix it and try and focus on the things that we can if actually if do. If we can't hope for the Blizzard to fix it, then it's time to just actually... switch fucking games, because the audience of this game well, will only continue games. to dwindle. Stop, stop being a part of this community, then. You should go play LoL. We are going to play this game and we're trying to make it as good as possible, because Blizzard's not going to do shit, so we're going to. Well, so, is there a way? Okay, the okay. So instead, instead of okay, first off, we don't need to like 
get up. into all this shit. Yeah, I, might I think I just realized here. actually what we're gonna do. This is the plan, okay? We continue to do nothing and wait, and eventually all of the Korean players are going to be switching over to LoL because Korea's huge <laughs> on that shit now. And then once they switch over, people like uh, Idra and In Control can go back to winning tournaments. I think that's the plan right now. I love you guys Idra. very much. Peace out. And amongst all members of this conversation except for In Control, Destiny is stuck with StarCraft 2 for the longest period of time. And Idra himself left StarCraft 2 in 2013, saying that he never even liked the game in the first place. I am not going to continue as a competitive player. Um, it's just gotten to the point where competition is not enjoyable for me anymore, and that is what kind of drove me in pro gaming, especially in StarCraft 2. I don't particularly enjoy the game, but I really liked beating people, and now that's just, well, I'm not winning nearly as much, which is part of the reason it's less fun. But the competition itself just is not as interesting to me or challenging to me or satisfying to me as it used to be, and without that I see no reason to continue playing. At that point Destiny was less eager to participate in tournaments because it wasn't nearly as profitable as streaming. And while he was still present on forums, subreddits, and he would even stream StarCraft 2 quite frequently, it was the moment when he chose to focus on new games and expand his streaming career further. One of the biggest last things that he did for the community was his own tournament Destiny 1, with a really interesting player roster. Destiny has left a huge mark in history for his achievements in live streaming and solo broadcasting. Even up to this day, he remains an important person and a crucial part of StarCraft 2 history. He even still streams it sometimes, paying tribute to the game that helped him launch his highly successful streaming career. Forkfester Hit Squad is the most dangerous group of harassers known to Zerg kind. Nuke it! Nuke it! Nuke it! Nuke it! Ah, get out! Get out! Get out! Go, 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 go. Oh shit, Kyle, there they go! Get out! Get the fuck out! And even though Destiny never won a big tournament, nor was he casting tons of events, his impact was still important for a lot of people in the StarCraft 2 community. He was one of the first to help pioneer gaming live streaming and how to work within that environment. His streams were both skillful, entertaining, and also controversial, but that's what made viewers attract to his persona and also StarCraft 2 itself. He was attracting a lot of new people, running charities, and just bringing fun to his viewers. With doing so, he was genuine about his takes on the game state, and he always tried to criticize things to make them better, and he was always vocal about things he perceived wrong with StarCraft 2 or its community. However, with time, his interest in StarCraft 2 declined, and he eventually switched to doing other things. Yes, some people were happy about him leaving, they would label him toxic or call him other bad words, and he would find himself embroiled in many political conflicts and controversies. His takes could seem strange or even offensive, but he is always willing to talk about anything and he is eager to discuss and criticize any matter. It was similar with StarCraft 2. It's important to keep in mind that the presence of such extraordinary people helped the community to be more alive and it brought a lot more activity and discussions on forums. It had a downside, of course, but it's an everlasting discussion about so-called villains and their impact on the community. However, we don't play and watch StarCraft 2 solely for its impeccable gameplay but also to learn and hear stories of different people. And Destiny's story is indeed unique in its own way. That's it for today's video. Check out the story of Stefano, one of the first foreign hopes in StarCraft 2. Have a nice day, and see you next time.